Pastor Ted Wilson, we're delighted to have you here in England today. Your first visit since becoming president of the Adventist World Church. You spent yesterday preaching in Watford and then in North London. You met a diversity of members. What was your reaction to the day? What picture of Adventism have you picked up from that? Uh, it's a privilege to be with you, Victor, and uh, what a, an exciting Sabbath we had. It was a day in which we were able to uh, worship together uh, and also to, to be in contact with people, uh, to meet them, to listen to them, to share in fellowship. And I think that's one of the most important parts about being a Christian, being able to interact and to gain strength from our common belief and faith in Jesus Christ and understanding his word and how that's to be interpreted in our lives in a very practical way. And I was just very excited. Uh, Some to... of those commonalities came out yesterday in, in the messages that you <laughs> shared, and particularly your, your passion in the soon coming of Jesus Christ. I think I heard that said several times. Yes, and, and, and I just, uh, I live for that, and I hope every Christian does, because that truly is the blessed hope. Uh, we have to live here and now, but we have that, that beautiful hope for the future. One thing I was really impressed about uh, yesterday, both in, in Watford as well as in North London, uh, was the, the enthusiasm and the excitement of not only adults, but of young people, young people who were just really excited about being passionate Christians in a, a contemporary world. And to me, that was a very refreshing thing, and I was, I was very happy to see that, and it warmed my heart. I, I'm wondering how, how that works, because some people have, have perceived your presidency as maybe being a little bit more traditional than, than previous ones, and yet these young people seem to be alive with the message that, that you're sharing. Um, why, why do you think that is? Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose whenever you focus on things which are of an absolute nature, the scriptures are God's word, and they bring absolutes with them. Uh, you know, we live in a very uh, fluid society, and I grew up in the age, you know, where you, uh, you don't trust anyone over 30, back in the, you know, the 60s and 70s. And I think that culture has certainly permeated uh, Western culture to a great extent, so that, you know, there's a, there's a lot of pluralism that goes around. So whenever you say, this is what God has said, we ought to, to listen to it, I suppose some people might say, ah, you know, that's kind of uh, conservative and, and rigid and legalistic, but just the opposite. I mean, we find such incredible grace in Scripture. We find how, how Christ has done everything for us, our work, is not to pull up ourselves by our bootstraps. Our work is to humble ourselves before the Lord, to submit to Him, and then allow Him through His justifying power, through His sanctifying power, to really then fill us with an excitement for what it means to be disciples of Christ and those that can share the word. And I think that is really what resonates with so many young people today because uh, the world is full of so many divergent viewpoints that we need an anchor, we need a rock, and that is Jesus Christ. And when they understand that, they become passionate for the Lord. That word humility you've used is an interesting mm -hmm. one because the main purpose in your being here this weekend is to open the rebuilt Union office, the, the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church for the, for the UK mm -hmm. and Ireland. And, you know, it is a bigger building than we had before. It is a nicer building than we had before. It's got better working space. But a building is, is just a building. Um, what vision do you see for a structure like this? How, how can it best serve the, the millions of people here in the UK and in the Republic of Ireland, many of whom don't have any faith at all these days? Yeah, Victor, that's a very good question. And uh, I'm delighted in what I've seen in this building so far. I've taken a tour, uh, Pastor McFarlane has allowed me to see, you know, the various building parts and the offices and the different aspects, the Voice of Prophecy area, and I'm, I'm impressed with 
you know, the contemporary look. It's a very airy, light feeling. But you know, as you say, a building is a building. And in fact, that's the, the message that I want to get across, of course, in our uh, rededication service. And that is that it's not the building itself, it's what happens in the building. And when you understand that this is a spiritual center, a center of evangelistic outreach for the 70 plus million people in the British Union, uh, this begins to help people understand that inside the building, things that happen are affecting personal lives. It's not just some kind of official bureaucratic uh, place in which people are thankful that at least it was repaired after, after the fire, but it is a place where the Lord can use uh, dedicated people through the power of the Holy Spirit to really touch the lives of individuals. Uh, the voice of prophecy, for instance, how it touches the lives through mail, through uh, internet, through whatever avenues are used, uh, ADRA UK, how it is able to touch people in very difficult and diverse settings, totally outside of even the UK itself, helping people find a better way of life and ultimately finding the source of all life, Jesus. Uh, when you think of all the personal things that are happening here in terms of helping church members be relevant to their neighbors and to their communities and uh, giving them assistance in practical ways and then introducing the one who uh, drives all of this, Jesus Christ, you begin to understand this is not just a building, this is a nerve center for evangelistic and Christ-centered, compassionate service. And that's really the point that needs to be uh, coming across to people who see a building. When you come to Western Europe, you find what is now perhaps one of the number one mission fields in the world. Um, you know, as a church, we emphasize the 1040 window and, and the, the Arab world and those places <laughs> where there are very few Christians. But secularized Western Europe is now rapidly becoming one of those places and you come to the British Union and, and the churches here and you would have seen yesterday the diversity in, in the different churches and you would notice particularly when you move into London that very few of the church members necessarily represent the majority of the population. Do you have some word or, or some advice? How, how do we work with that diversity to, to finish the message? Well, Christ came to die for every person on this earth. So we have to understand that we truly are a family, regardless of our origin, uh, what we look like, our social background, family background, whatever it might be. I think one of the most important things is for Seventh-day Adventists to understand how they are to relate to everyone, not just those who may uh, look like them or they may feel more comfortable with that uh, particular group of people, socioeconomic, whatever it might be. We have to be uh, living letters, as Paul calls uh, people, people who are walking and living letters from God. And I think as, as we have that perspective, we'll begin to understand that we need to try and reach everyone. Obviously, there are different ways and methods to reach people. Some are a little more reserved and hesitant to become involved in an interactive kind of uh, proclamation of the gospel. Others are very extroverted, you know, and they're just bubbling over. Uh, my wife is like that, you know, and I tend to be maybe a little more reserved and everything. But however that is, when we truly ask for the Holy Spirit to take control of our lives, when we truly humble ourselves and understand our grace relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, the Lord is going to infuse in us a, a, a wonderful spirit, the Holy Spirit, to really help then in reaching all classes of people, all types of people. And I think uh, here in the British Union, that perspective needs to be enlarged to the maximum. And, and God is gonna help to reach every part of this uh, tremendous territory here in uh, the British Union. I, I have full confidence in that. And I, I think there are many ways that creative people are gonna find to be able to do that.
And you're happy with that creativity. Oh, um, absolutely. Because there, there is a, a myriad of evangelism. And, and sometimes we find, and this is the other side of diversity, that some people say there is only one way to share the gospel, and that's the traditional evangelism, or it's the door-to-door -door work. And there are others, and perhaps particularly our young people, who have other radical ways of doing things. Are, are, are you happy with that kind of diversity in the church? Absolutely. Every way that you can present Christ because you see, you have to have a message to present. If you're just doing something creative just for the fun of it, that's a different story. But when you're doing something uh, to present Jesus in a relevant way to a culture or to a society that is changing rapidly, uh, the Holy Spirit will be in that and will carry the message. The message is what is really important and people will see that. And that message from what you've said yesterday and, and today, you, you keep focusing on the word grace, which is an important word. Within the church internally, we sometimes find that word isn't used as much as it should be. You look on the Adventist blogosphere, you, you read reports and you see the way people sometimes treat each other who see things differently theologically perhaps, and yet they're they're both Seventh-day Adventists. What, what words do you, do you have to, to help people in, in that kind of situation? Well, there are some very basic beliefs that Seventh-day Adventists ought to hold in common. Things that are so clear in Scripture, at least they're clear to me, uh, that we then can galvanize uh, around those beautiful truths. Uh, there are marginal things that people have differences of opinion on. Unfortunately, if people have differences of opinion on major things, uh, the Sabbath, the, re the reason for the Sabbath as a capstone of, of a six-day creation, or whatever it might be, uh, then of course we have some real theological differences. But regardless of what kind of difference one may have, uh, we need to exhibit the fruits of the Spirit. If we are truly being driven by a relationship with Christ and by His grace in our lives, by His righteousness, by the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, we're going to treat each other, regardless of our opinions, we're going to treat each other with dignity, with true love. After all, if you don't, how does that reflect on that relationship? So I think we certainly can be kind and loving and, uh, and open to people's ideas at the same time being very resolute and very strong in our beliefs coming from the Bible. Uh, the Bible is, you know, that solid Word of God, and to me that's a non-negotiable. That's the cornerstone of our faith. Absolutely, but uh, it's important that we do it in a spirit of love. And it may come at the end of the day, we just say we have to agree to disagree, but do it with Christ-like love. And uh, never lose your passion for what you believe, but do it in the spirit of Christ. And, and that's what I appreciate with you, is seeing that passion coming through. Uh, and some people obviously agree with every word you say, and others have a, have a diversity of opinion. But the passion and the grace, if that comes through. If there's one last message, one sole thing that you would want to share with people living in the British Isles today, what would it be? I would say, do not give up your hold on truth. You know, when you read Revelation 3, it says, hold fast to that which you have so that, you know, you'll keep that crown of life. Don't, don't let uh, the, the challenges of being in a very secular society, a very sophisticated society, a society that sometimes doesn't care about religious things or seemingly doesn't care. Because really, when you scratch the surface and really get down, into a person's thinking, everyone has a great need for God. It's just how you approach them. So to the people, to the members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in uh, the British Union, in this tremendous territory, uh, I would just say, hold fast to Jesus. Keep your hand in His and ask Him to lead you to someone every day that you'll be able to in some way help and witness about your marvelous connection and relationship with our coming King, Jesus Christ. Pastor Ted Wilson, thank you so much for sharing that message with us. It's a privilege, Victor. God bless you.